All right, viewers, so today we're going to... No, you've been hacked. And you've been hacked by the Gorilla Man. The Gorilla Man. And the Gorilla Man's been watching your videos. And the Gorilla Man is not happy with the way you've been destroying hair springs. Now, I'm gonna set you a challenge. A challenge of your ability to correct your mistakes. If you don't correct your mistakes, you'll face the wrath of the Gorilla Man. But if you succeed in correcting your mistakes, then the Gorilla Man will be happy once again. So, I'm gonna set you a series of challenges. A series of challenges to test your ability to re-straighten hair springs into their original coiled shape. Alright, that's all I'm asking. So, let the Hairspring Olympics commence. Well, he's certainly not a part of the Greg Ola Horology Club, is he, viewers? A one, a two. Tingling, tingling, tingling. It's the Hello again, guys. Greg Ola Productions here, and it appears I've been hacked by a mysterious character called the Gorilla Man. I don't know who the Gorilla Man is. There could be more than one. I don't know how he got into my account. I thought I had two-step verification on, but, you know, these guys are... I mean, he's the gorilla man. I don't know how smart he is, but anyway. The point is, he's hacked my channel, and he's demanding stuff about hairsprings. Um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, it's kind of embarrassing to admit this, but he's kind of right. I mean, I've, I've messed a lot of these guys up <laughs> over the years. Uh... So, I th I think I think it might actually be a good idea to uh, you know start training for the hairspring Olympic. I don't even know what the hairspring Olympics are. What whatever kind of challenges he's got up his sleeve, I don't know. Um, but I think it'd be a good idea to kind of practice that before I get my channel deleted or whatever he wants to do. I don't know. He might just destroy my channel. I don't know what I don't know what the plan is. Well, anyways, on my end, we're gonna get something going here. I want to take this threat fairly seriously, and plus, I wanted to know about hairsprings for the longest time and how to actually work on these things. Why not now? Why not just do this now? So, if you've seen my latest episode of Alarming Antiques, you'll know that we got a lot of these guys, Style sixty six movements. And uh, very soon there's going to be other stuff relating to 66s on this channel, but that's more factual and less kind of repair-based. So, anyway, this is more of a repair-based series here. Okay, so what goes wrong with the 66s? Well, they were budget clocks to begin with, and with, with, that, with that statement right there, people love to just screw around with these things, and if they weren't working, they'd just kind of dab more oil on it or try and mess with the hairspring or something these things are pretty disgusting by the time you get them most of the time and they're not in the greatest shape so they're usually pretty banged up when you get them and hairsprings of course are no exception to this i've got a number one or a number of these movements another and hairsprings are no exception they're pretty banged up as well now what i'm doing here i'm working on a really early 66 this one is from 1935 the case is over there and I want it to run accurately there it is right there we've cleaned it we've serviced it but we can't get it to run accurately because our hairspring just doesn't want to work right so we'll start with this movement here and see what we can do to get this thing to work right so what I've been doing is I've been doing some corrective hairspring bending some of the first I've ever done that actually didn't go horribly wrong it's not perfect, as you can see the outer coil, and usually the outer coils are screwed up on these things. It's almost there, but it's not perfect. There's the end of the hairspring. And if we just go away from that for a second. 
So I've tried my best there. I don't know if it really doesn't work right. I want to test it like this. It may not work right, but I don't know. I'm going to leave that like that for now, if that makes any sense. And going back to the subject of dirt for a second, we get the movements. They look quite disgusting and out of focus. While we get the hairsprings, they're no different. I'm not even sure how they attract all this dust. Look at some of this stuff in here. And yeah, the thing looks fairly filthy. Dirty movements tend to run faster because this hairspring is sticking together ever so slightly and probably, I'd probably never see it with the naked eye. So I'm gonna try and clean this thing and get it to run right. And hopefully these alarm clocks will run great after the hairspring is clean first. Uh, I've also tried uh, off camera, tried experimenting with demagnetizing we'll try and mess with that later we're just going to focus on cleaning right now we're not going to worry about bending and stuff a friend of mine has given me a method that i'd like to try and just in case you viewers would like to know how i get these things off uh i've got my pliers here i just kind of go like this with it and grab a watch case opener slide it under the collet and get it off you gotta be very careful with this though you just in increasingly slide the pliers in there more and more. Don't squeeze down on them. And there it is. What I've done here is I've taken the hairspring, stuck it in this kind of rough looking old Rubbermaid uh, seal container here, or whatever this is. I don't know what you'd call this, but it's waterproof. Liquids can't get out from the side when the lid's on, so that's great. And yeah, we're just taking the hairspring, stick it in there. This is brand new Spray 9, and we're gonna run this in the ultrasonic cleaner for, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, and see how it comes out. Okay, so our hairspring is done in there. So let's see. I don't know what's going on here. Did we actually clean it or what the heck happened here? I might have to put the phone light on it. Well, it looks a heck of a lot cleaner now. Wow. Um, very rarely is this type of stuff, at least in my case, that successful. That looks way cleaner than it was. I'm using a brush to try and wipe it off here too. I don't know, there might be a little bit but something still in there. What do you guys think? That looks way cleaner though. Good work, Spray 9. That's what we were using. And I'm just gonna try and pull this up a bit. Oh, pfft. I think just from falling off of here, there's a little bit of debris on that now. Let's try and get that out of there. Yeah, that looks way better. I don't know if it's 100% perfect, but that's definitely better than what we were doing before. Great, that's just great. We've cleaned a hairspring. So all that's really been done is we've just had it in here and just cleaned it out quick. Not bad, viewers, not bad at all. Okay, so attempt one, we failed. The thing has gained almost an hour. And we've got uh, a reason for that, actually. So you're looking at the balance wheel here, and motion's not amazing, but that's not what we're concentrating on. Notice that little dot on the balance. See that there? That dot right there on there? That is a punched out hole, and in fact, there's another one here. What those two dots are for is to help weight the balance wheel correctly. So that right there has everything to do, well, not everything, but it has some effect on speed adjustment or speed that this thing runs at. Now, I'm not a professional. I don't know everything about uh, poising a balance wheel, but those two holes there are for just getting it to run accurately. And that hairspring is not the original for this balance wheel. So essentially what I'm saying is, the hairspring and balance wheel, the wheel is weighted to the hairspring it comes with, so they're basically paired from the factory. 
Greg, why did you change the balance wheel and hairspring around? Because this balance wheel is original to this clock, uh, but it's not original for that hairspring there. So basically I've done some mixing and matching with hairsprings. So what we're going to do is put the original balance wheel that went with this hairspring back on and see what the heck is going on here. The hairspring that came with this clock originally was kind of mangled up. I didn't want to use it. So we made a switch to that one and clearly something is screwy here because it's not running accurately. So we're going to put this wheel on. Uh, this one has been weighted differently as well. I see there's one hole at the top instead of two. And then there's three, well, there's two big holes at the bottom here and one there. Oh, wait, I'm stupid. That's just, just forget that viewers. There's one hole here and two there. And for some reason, this one goes all the way through. Not really sure why. I assume this is a fairly complicated process. I mean, there must be like some strategic way of knowing where to put the holes or deciding to punch it out fully or, or doing whatever. I'm not really sure. We're going to try and fix this though. That's the goal. In case you're wondering where the replacement hairspring and the replacement balance wheel came from, it came from my parts lot. Okay, we've switched out the balance wheel. We've got the right balance wheel with the hairspring it originally was paired with. Uh, I'm not sure if this is even pinned right, honestly. This thing, it's not running amazing, but it's running okay. I don't know, are those coils binding up? Or touching each other or whatever, something that may get them to run fast. Not binding up, that's the wrong term. Yes, viewers, if I don't know what I'm talking about, or if I look like I don't know what I'm talking about, it's both. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> this is a lot of experimentation. I'm gonna be fumbling around with that taper pin quite a bit. Because if you you know, if you move it the wrong way or whatever, it'll end up the hairspring will end up moving upwards or downwards. It won't stay flat like that. Um, so it's not in very far. It's not far into the stud, it can go farther. I'm just kinda doing this just for the heck of it just to see if I can even get this to run accurately, period. Um, well, actually not even run accurately quite yet. I just wanna see if it can lose time. I haven't been able to get this thing to lose any time. It gains time on every setting, speed-wise, so. Okay, let's uh, test it like this. Okay, so what's been going on here is, <laughs> it's kinda of funny, uh, we've stopped, for, for time testing purposes, we've stopped using this dial here because that is the original dial that goes with that clock and if that gets messed up I can't replace that. This dial here is the one that went with this parts case if you saw an alarming antiques. Um, well actually it didn't. It's the same type but this one's in rougher condition. So I've used that as my tester dial and we've been gone for a few hours now and this thing has been almost exactly perfect it's kind of funny actually, this thing has been running almost the exact time, a few minutes slow uh, to the Leland here, which is on the correct time. Uh, as you can hear by the amplitude, it's a little sluggish. Um, yeah, so it, it doesn't run great, but I'm just kind of letting the spring wind down and see you know, when it stops or if it'll stop. Let's pick this up actually, let's kind of play around with this. Because usually when clocks are like this, they stop when you kind of start screwing with it. Mm, nope. Oh, I think the minute hand just fell off. Nice. Okay, well. I've used my beautiful cursive handwriting to just address what this case is for. Okay, well, it won't stop, so that's good. So where do we go from here? Well... Uh, we didn't have to go and screw around with demagnetizing, at least not yet. Um, I might try and play around with the hairspring a little more. I mean, the I, the goal was to, you know, make it lose time, but it's decided to just lose like two minutes or whatever the heck it is and keep time almost exactly. So putting the original balance wheel back with this hairspring was a good idea. Uh, we've gotten somewhere. That's great. Uh, I'm not sure yeah I might play with that that hairspring a little bit more see what I can get it to do that's the straightest I've ever gotten it to be in 
the degree of flatness. So the hairspring was in flat. That's the flattest I've been able to get it. And it seems to want to go okay. So that's good. Um, yeah, viewers, I'm going to have to get back to you on this because this is... I was kind of expecting this to not work right, but it has, so that's great. It's not perfect, though. I mean, we've, you know, this is the slowest speed setting, and it's doing that, well, almost the slowest speed setting anyway. Uh, it was a little bit, the regulator was a little bit further to the right than it is now, but not by much. So it's almost the slowest speed setting, and it's running accurately. <laughs> uh, that's getting somewhere. That's not optimal, though, for having a clock to use. You kind of want it both ways. You don't want it just one way. You want to be able to adjust the regulators to both the slow and fast position, not just have it one way. So I'm going to see if this thing was lying to me. I don't think it was, but I'm going to let it run for a little while longer and see what results we get out of it. If things stay consistent like they are, maybe I'll try and play around with the hairspring a little more. Not sure. 